welcome to this video. Today we are going to prove that angles are congruent. So fasten your brain belts because we're going for a ride. Our objective is to approve and apply theorems about angles and we're specifically going to do a proof that proves that vertical angles are congruent and another one that actually uses that theorem that we just proved. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to look at is our given information. And when you have something that you're given, go back to your diagram and look at it carefully so that you understand exactly what you're given. Here we have that angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. Well, let's look at our diagram. Here are 1 and 3. Now remember, we've already been using that vertical angles are congruent, but we're taking that step back to prove how we establish that vertical angles are congruent. When we are doing our proof, whatever we're given goes into the first line, and this is called a two-column proof. The statements go on this side, and then the reasons or our justification goes on this side here. So we're going to start with angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles, and of course that was our given information. Now let's go back to our diagram, and let's look and see what we know. Well. We've already been talking about that if we have a linear pair, they're supplementary. And let's go the other direction as well. We have another linear pair here. We know that a linear pair is also supplementary. We're going to use that to actually prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Let's go ahead and put in the next line of our proof, and that is what we just talked about that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary and 2 and 3 are supplementary. And the reason is angles that form a linear pair are supplementary. Now remember, in order to use those algebraic properties that we reviewed in the last video, we have to change them so that they look like what we established in algebra. We need to have numbers and variables and an equal sign in order to add, subtract, and use those different properties. So now we need to change this and actually deal with numbers. So I'm going to rewrite this and put it the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180. And then I'm going to do the same for 2 and 3, specifically because now I can apply those algebraic properties. And I did this because the sum of the measures of supplementary angles is 180. Now take a look at this. Both of these angles right here are equal to 180. If they are equal to 180, they are equal to each other. And that is specifically the transitive property. So taking a look here, what I've done is I have just made this line equal to this line right here. And then I've just eliminated the 180s. Now, I have on this side of the equal sign the measure of angle 2. I have on this side another measure of angle 2. Well, if you have the same thing on both sides, then we can just subtract those out. So if I were to just subtract these, I would be left with the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. And that was the subtraction property of equality. I need to look back. I am trying to prove the angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. But right now I have this measure in front, meaning that I'm talking about numbers. I need to change it so that instead it looks like this. This is saying that the measurements are the same, but because they have the same measurement, they also have the same size and shape. And that would just be called the definition of congruent angles. Now let's use that to do one more proof. This time we're going to take what we've learned, and this time we're given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. So let's look at our diagram. And we're going to prove that these two blue angles, 2 and 3, are congruent to each other. All we know right now is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. But if we know that vertical angles are congruent, we can use this. So in my next line, what I'm going to put is that angle 4 is congruent to angle 2 because vertical angles are congruent. Now 
take a look, both angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent to angle 4. So if they're both congruent to 4, they are congruent to each other. And that is the transitive property. So basically, we have crossed these out, and then we've combined angle 1 and angle 2. And again, that is the transitive property. Now going back to our diagram, we have left off that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. But we're trying to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So again, right now, this is what we have, and we're trying to get to this. Let's use, or that vertical angles are congruent. We now are going to use that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, because vertical angles are congruent. Now take a careful look. They are both congruent to angle 1, therefore they are congruent to each other. And again, that would be the transitive property. We could also justify and use this, the substitution property as well. In my opinion, either one will work. Now as far as your video quiz, so I'm going to give you this proof and then you need to put in the reasons for these statements here. I'll see you guys in class.